In this video, we study game theory in the context of distributed systems. Distributed systems is a prime application area for game theory. In many distributed systems, individual parts of the system are controlled by different participants, and these participants might exhibit some selfish behavior. For instance, in the internet, network providers want to have their traffic routed as fast as possible, even at the cost of the other providers. In this video, we study selfish caching as a simple example for selfish behavior in a distributed system. Assume that we are given a network of players, where each player is represented by a node. The nodes care about access to a movie. Each node can choose between two possible strategies. First, a node can simply cache the movie itself. Let's assume that storing the movie locally costs one unit of currency. Alternatively, a node can fetch the movie from some other node that caches the movie. This incurs the network cost, which is the distance in the network to the closest caching node. So depending whether the network distance D is smaller than 1, node W will prefer to fetch the movie from node V. If the network distance D is larger than 1, node W prefers to cache the movie directly. If the distance is exactly 1, caching and fetching both cost the same. Let's look at a simple example network with three nodes. Consider that nodes V and W are caching the movie. We are interested in the so-called Nash equilibrium. A Nash equilibrium is a situation where each node has chosen a strategy and no node wants to change their strategy. However, nodes V and W caching the movie is not a Nash equilibrium. For example, node W would rather not cache the movie for cost 1, since W can simply fetch the movie from node V for a cost of 0.75. We can sometimes find a Nash equilibrium if we start in some random situation and then change the strategy of some nodes which are unhappy until all nodes are happy with their current strategy. If only node V caches the movie we have a Nash equilibrium. Nodes U and W would both not change their strategy because they can get the movie from V for less than cost 1. And node V can also not unilaterally change its strategy. If node V did not cache the movie, nobody else would, and the cost of the nearest cache would be infinite for node V. So V rather keeps the movie cached. Sometimes in a game multiple Nash equilibria exist. Please pause the video and try to find another Nash equilibrium. Indeed, this network does have a second Nash equilibrium. If the two outer nodes U and W cache the movie, we also have a Nash equilibrium. Why is that? In this case, node V does not want to change its strategy, as it can easily fetch the movie from one of the two outer nodes at a cost which is less than 1 but also nodes U and W will not change their strategy. If node U decided not to cache anymore, it needs to fetch the movie from W, and the distance from U to W is strictly more than 1. And this is the same for W as well. Since no node wants to unilaterally deviate from its strategy, this is indeed a Nash equilibrium. But the cost of this solution is strictly higher than if only node V cached the movie. The social optimum is defined as the minimum possible total cost. In this network, at least one node must cache the movie, and we would be best off if node V caches the movie, since node V is in the center of the network. This minimizes the sum of the costs of all participants. In general, we are interested how far the cost of the social optimum is from the cost of a Nash equilibrium. This is called the price of anarchy. An anarchy is a society without rulers, without central government. So the system is organized on the basis of voluntary cooperation. The price of anarchy measures the ratio between the cost of the Nash equilibrium and the social optimum. The Nash equilibrium measures the sum of costs of selfish participants. If the price of anarchy is high, then central planning would reduce the cost for the distributed system considerably. If the price of anarchy is low, we are doing well even without central organization. As you have seen before, a game can have multiple Nash equilibria, and they might have a different cost. As usual in computer science, if multiple Nash equilibria exist, we consider the worst case, the equilibrium with the highest total cost. The idea is that the distributed system might somehow maneuver itself into this costly Nash equilibrium, and once it is there, no participant has an incentive to change its strategy, so the system will remain in this state forever. However, there is an alternative definition, the so-called optimistic price of anarchy, which considers the Nash equilibrium with the lowest cost. We can easily compute the price of anarchy for our example network. We have already seen that the social optimum is achieved if node V caches the movie. 
node V will incur a cost of 1, and the other two nodes incur a cost of their distance to V. In the sum this is a cost of 2.25. And we have already seen that it is also a Nash equilibrium if the two outer nodes cache the movie. The caching costs 1 plus 1 for the two outer nodes, and 0.5 for node V, so the total is 2.5. Now the ratio of the two values is 1.11, which in turn is the price of anarchy for this three-node network. However, if you can freely choose the network, and the distances of the edges in the network, how bad can the price of anarchy of the selfish caching gain get? Can you make the price of anarchy as high as 2? Or even higher? What is the largest number you can achieve? Please pause the video and think about this. Now this was a difficult question, so let me help. Let's try to find a network for which the price of anarchy is high. In our example network we have k nodes. All these nodes are very close to each other. Think of them being in the same city. Let's assume that any two nodes in this city have distance zero between them. Now we clone these nodes, such that we have k nodes on the left, and k nodes on the right, in another city. Between any node on the left and any node on the right we have a large distance. We don't quite want distance 1, so we make the distance between the two cities 1 minus epsilon. Can you now compute the price of anarchy for this network? Please pause the video. When computing the price of anarchy, it is usually best to first compute the social optimum. In this case, the social optimum is simply 2. We cache the movie on one node in each city. This way all other nodes can access the movie from a node in their city, with zero cost. Having more nodes to cache the movie would only increase the total cost. And only one node caching the movie is also not good, because then all the nodes in the other city would have to fetch the movie from that one distant node. So two nodes, one in each city, is optimal. Note that this social optimum is not a Nash equilibrium. Node R2 for instance is not happy about caching the movie, because node R2 can fetch the movie from node L2 for a cost of 1 minus epsilon, which is strictly less than the cost of 1 when caching the movie itself. In fact, the only Nash equilibrium in this situation is a single node, in either city, caching the movie. But this cost is much larger than the social optimum, and this is exactly what we want, so that the price of anarchy becomes large. More specifically, the cost of any Nash equilibrium here is 1 for the single node caching the movie, and then k times 1 minus epsilon for the k nodes in the other city. If we ignore the smaller terms, and make epsilon as small as possible, then the ratio becomes roughly k divided by 2. If we say that we are in a network with n nodes, then k is n divided by 2. So ignoring constant factors, the ratio of the price of anarchy is in the order of n. Note that this ratio is as bad as it can get. Essentially, instead of the constant cost of a single node caching the movie, we end up with a cost which is asymptotically as high as if every node cached the movie. It doesn't get worse than this. In other words, in selfish caching game it is generally truly useful if a central authority decides which nodes cache the movie. There is one more natural question we want to answer. How easy is it to find a Nash equilibrium? In general, in game theory, finding a Nash equilibrium is known to be difficult. There are examples where computing a Nash equilibrium is practically impossible. But some games allow for a simple construction of a Nash equilibrium, and selfish caching is such a game. We can find a Nash equilibrium with a simple greedy algorithm. Let's discuss the algorithm with an example. Here we have a little network. We simply choose any node to cache the movie right away, for example node F. Now all the nodes who are at most at distance 1 from node F decide not to cache the movie. Node C is close to F, but also node D, which is only at distance 0.6 plus 0.3, which is still cheaper than caching the movie itself. Once we marked all nodes which do not want to cache the movie anymore, we simply choose any other node again to cache the movie. Let's say we choose node E. Again node B is close enough to E to drop out, and so on. We always choose a remaining node to cache the movie and mark all nodes in its vicinity to fetch the movie instead, until all nodes are decided. This is a Nash equilibrium because no node wants to change its strategy. The nodes which fetch the movie from somebody else don't want to change their strategy because they could fetch the movie from somebody close by. The closest cache might have changed in the run of the algorithm. Node D for instance chose to fetch because node F was closer than distance 1, but later node E was even closer. 
On the other hand, all the caching nodes do not want to change their strategy as well. When we chose them, we made sure that they have a distance which is larger than one, between any two of them. So no node changes its strategy, and we have a Nash equilibrium. This greedy algorithm also works for more general variants of selfish caching, for instance when the edges in the graph are directed or when the nodes have different demands for the movie. Let us summarize. In this video, we discussed the selfish caching game as an example for analyzing a situation in distributed systems with selfish participants. We defined some core concepts in game theory, like the Nash equilibrium, the social optimum, and the price of anarchy. And finally we learned a simple greedy algorithm to compute a Nash equilibrium for selfish caching. Game theory and computation both go back to the fabulous John von Neumann, who introduced both fields when he was at Princeton in the 1940s, and before that studied at ETH Zurich. Thanks for watching this video.